I don't think you have enough balance. Regardless. Uh, I'll... <laughs> I'll be I the judge know. of that. As she falls to the ground, she's falling to the ground going, I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> I have judged it. I cannot. Hmm. It's super nice out today. That's for sure. Welcome back, everybody. We're wearing shorts because this is the first episode that we've done when it's been officially spring out. Yeah. So we're also wearing hoodies. Mm -hmm. So we're the the hoodie short people that walk around in the cold wearing hoodies (laughs) and shorts, Mm -hmm. except the opposite. We're walking around in the heat wearing hoodies and shorts. Yep. (laughs) But we're so excited to announce that our hoodies today are our merchandise from our sponsors Mm -hmm. over at Cardinal Artworks. Yeah. So you can get our hoodies. They come in black. They come in uh, gray. And you can either get them plain in the front, or you can get, if you move, if Tiana moves her mic out of the way, you can get them with the Diana Zapparo logo. Mm-hmm. You can get them with the podcast, the part of the podcast logo. And then on the back is the full, the full podcast logo. And it is a stroke of luck. <laughs> yep. That's the name of the podcast. And can you show the... Yeah. So... Uh, we tested a bunch of different designs, but we've ultimately decided that we're going to be embroidering them. But we also have, uh, I want to show the shirt first. We have them on shirts. And we have, this is an aphasia shirt. It says, together we will fight. My differability does not define me. That is perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much, Cardinal Artworks. Yes, Christina and I definitely. spent months working on the designs for these. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so by the time this episode gets out there, um, everybody will be able to buy this from Deanna'sAprow.com. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this episode, we're talking about relationships yep. and specifically relationships with disabilities. Mm-hmm. So let's jump right into it, Dee. What, uh, what general advice do you have for people that have brain injuries, strokes, when they're, when they're getting out there dating? Well, that's the thing is in my own like relationships and talking to people in on line, um, I noticed the first thing I tell guys, Hey, I had a stroke at 14 right and ghosted me or in their life their my life (laughs) right so your broad your broad advice would be just be upfront about your disability and don't hide it yeah is you deserve you deserve someone that likes you for who you are yeah not like my stroke right and i I am driving and I am in my master's now. That was not, no. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so here's a question for you. Were you, did, were you ever worried dating that you were going to meet somebody that was going to try to take advantage of you because of your disability? I didn't feel like that was a issue because I know my bind, my boundaries and yeah. And you have a mean right hook. Yes, actually. <laughs> <laughs> my stroke happened on my right, right. side. I mean, you can't pull your punches. Pulling punches is not a term that Deanna's right arm knows. <laughs> yeah. So you had a couple of relationships um, after your stroke. Mm-hmm. Um, I know in talking, you mentioned that you had... Um, you had like a month relationship with uh, and, with a kid. Yeah, kid. We you were teenagers. Young man, They're kids. Whatever. No, you're not um, a young man until you're twenty. We. I was in math class actually, and he was um next to me, and he said, "Do you want to go to prom with me?" And I'm like, "Oh." Yeah, and we, after the fact, he said, can I date you? 
And he said, I said, yeah, for a month. And he broke up with me because on text message. <laughs> <laughs> but we had um the same friend group. Right. That must have been a little awkward. In high school. Yeah. Was that the guy that your mom told us about that uh, you got caught kissing in the hallway? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I didn't. Little frisky Deanna. Oh, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I would never have been caught dead trying to kiss somebody in the hallway at school. Just saying, you're pretty, you're pretty ballsy, huh? No, it was not. It was only like him and me. Uh-huh. But you got caught, so... No. A teacher or somebody, like, walked by. Yeah, that's what I said. You got caught. (laughs) No. A teacher or somebody walked by and caught you. How else would your parents have known? And the teacher called you, your parents. I don't know. You got caught. Red-handed. Okay. (laughs) So then you had a three-year relationship after that. that, uh, How old were you when that happened? When that when that relationship? I was eighteen and I went to my best friend's graduation party and I met him there and we like I said like hey we were talking after like text message and stuff and I said hey I had a stroke at 14 and having my story and stuff. And he said, wow, that is interesting and stuff. And we started dating for three years, but he was emotionally abusive, like the last little bit. And he, like i i went to milwaukee for intense speech and language therapy and i was facetiming him he said you're not good enough and he said i thought having your speech like instant better And I'm like, no, it was, it is hard work. And over time, having change, not immediately. And he he said, oh, I thought that. And he was mean about it. And I'm like, that is it. Right. And you were engaged at the time. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounded, it sounds to me like he... He was, he was attracted to you, but he was not attracted to all of you. And he wanted a yeah. get, a get well, a get better fast Sympathy scheme. card. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted, he wanted you to get well, like immediately. And he, he wasn't prepared for this to be with you for the rest of your life. It sounds like. Correct. And he was just mean, mean. about it. Yeah. And I told my ex mom like i facetimed him her and i said hey like i told that and she said i think you are not dating him and we broke up like a month later and I didn't cry, not anything, because I'm like, wow, I'm free. Hmm. Hey guys, we need to tell you about our sponsor, Cardinal Artworks. That's right. Cardinal Artworks is our exclusive provider of really great merchandise. They have cutting boards, t-shirts, cups, you name it. 
That's right. Scott and Christina over at Cardinal Artworks are amazing. They're also the exclusive provider of all of the merchandise for the Diana Zapparo and a Stroke of Luck brand. So make sure you check them out. We're going to have a link in the podcast description below. Enjoy the show. So before you met me, you you had dated you were like dating for a couple years before you met me after that? Yep. Yeah. How did that go? I dated couple of guys in the mix after the three-year relationship but before Tyler and we had like that's me yeah (laughs) um and I dated for like a couple of months like here in there and one time we had a date at the mall actually and we went to the car show at the mall and i we like texted like after and he said a long like text message he said i think we are not like dating anymore because I feel your disability is prominent. And I'm like, I didn't text back at all, ever. (laughs) Because, okay, fine. Next. You know, you're you're the first person that I've ever dated that has had a disability. And, you know, we... We talked on FaceTime and I didn't like, yeah, you talk a little different, but you know, when we went on our first date, I didn't, you know, I didn't feel like there was anything in the way of our compatibility and we really hit it off and we were like both honest with each other. And I feel like that really helped. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I, some people might be like, oh, is are disabled people your thing? You know, I've gotten a little bit of bullying over the, you know, not like hardcore bullying, but like teasing over the years where people are like, oh, you must, that must be a kink. You're like into somebody with a disability or they, they are, or the other way around, like super interested, like, oh, like tell, like, tell me about that. Do you find that interesting? And it's like, I don't, I don't, define you by your differ by your differability Mm -hmm. i don't define you by your disability it's just a thing that happened to you that you've overcome obviously now we're turning it into a positive because i really think that you have the power to inspire but even if you didn't have your disability you know nobody can know everything and i have the skills to bring bring a voice to your disability and we've certainly learned a lot about the consequences of your disability and what mm-hmm. that means to our relationship over, over the years too. Well, yeah, but I, I'm talking more about like, what does it mean for our future? As mm-hmm. far as like, uh, in another episode, we're going to talk about like, uh, disability benefits and mm-hmm. how you've gotten supported by this our system. Far, yeah. Right. And what, and how does that affect our potential future because we are married. relationship. We're, we are getting married. So yeah. that's a topic for a different episode because mm-hmm. we've got a lot of griping to do about the current system and yes. how it yeah. keeps people down. But yes, not up. Right. There's a lot of things that arguably make a relationship, especially a committed relationship hard. with somebody with a disability hard. hard. And yeah. you have to really love the person because and and this is Full not heartedly right and this is not a knock at your disability but there is a lot of easier options out there not that i've had any luck dating but there is it it can certainly be easier there there are relationships that i've been in where i don't have to worry about how she's going to get a job and i don't have to worry about you know, if we get married, does the state take my money? Or, you know, I don't have to worry about that. But at the same time, it's worth it to me because I love you. And, Thanks, babe. And 
I can put up with a lot because ultimately, like, I mean, I don't have a dog anymore. Rest in peace, Molly. But all I needed in life was a dog and a roof over my head and some food in my stomach. <laughs> so I'm not a very hard person to make happy. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's what it took was you finding the person that loves you for you. Not and your, my disability. Well, I don't think anybody would love your disability. I think, I think given the option, if somebody could wave a magical wand, you'd wake up tomorrow without it. You're not in love with your huh. disability. Yeah. But, um, but loves you for you and the disability is just there. It's a part of you. Exactly. Yeah. And I think it makes you more of an interesting person. It's not, it's definitely not easy. Um, you have to, as if you're, if you are in a relationship or if you ever might find yourself in a relationship with somebody that has a disability, it can be trying at times. Um, you know, I, in conversation with other people, one of my pet peeves is when they drag a conversation on and they don't get to the point. But with Diana, it's, I have to be a little patient and, and I don't say it out loud. I, I still do think it because it's like my, my concentration is like, okay, where's the point? But I know you're getting to the point and I know that, that in your head, eventually <laughs> in your head, the point is there. So you have to have a lot of patience and mm -hmm. trust that you're going to get it out. And I remember I, I, I speak pretty fluent aphasia from like month number two. I think it was like uh, second month dating that um, you were trying to describe something that was downstairs that you needed to get. And your parents were both at a loss. And, you know, this was like one of the, the top five, like the first five times I'd met them. and. Your parents were, were like talking to me, like, how can I help you with your aphasia? Um, how can I learn aphasia? And you're like, I need to get this. And it was, I think it was a microwave. It was because I think we were preparing for you to go Move into college. To yep. Go to campus. And yes. you were describing it in a way that was so obscure and nobody could possibly have known. In my head, like that word was out yeah. but i'm like i can't say that well out anyways loud. i said i said do you mean microwave and you're like yes and your dad looked right at me and he went how the heck did you get that and i'm like i already speak fluid aphasia <laughs> so you have to you have to be willing to put in the effort and it's not all rainbows and butterflies um as no relationship is there is a funny story that I wanted to tell about be, be careful when you're with somebody that has a disability. My, there was this uh, time when we were goofing around. My initial instinct when someone throws a kick at me is to catch their foot. That's a self-defense mechanism. You, you trap their foot. Well, Deanna didn't know that that was my uh, reaction. So Deanna went to kick me. With her good foot, using her bad foot to pivot on. And I caught Deanna's foot. And you could see in her face in slow motion, she goes, Oh crap. <laughs> she tumbles to the ground. And she she just went down because she can't really balance on her bad foot for long. And then she started bawling and crying and she thought I beat her up. And she was telling, <laughs> she was telling everybody, her parents and everything that I hurt her. And I was like, Tiana, it's that sarcastic way. Well, it didn't sound like that to me, but I was like, <laughs> you kicked me. And like, that was my like knee jerk reaction to being kicked. And I didn't even think anything of it. Cause it, it was just a knee-jerk reaction, mm -hmm. um, but it's Deanna learned she doesn't kick me ever again because I just do or that. Or on my right leg, not my left. I don't think you. <laughs> I don't think you have enough balance. Regardless, uh, I'll. <laughs> I'll be the judge know. of that. As she falls to the ground, she's falling to the ground, going, "I'll be the judge of that." <laughs> I have judged it. I cannot. <laughs> So anyways, funny. thank you guys for tuning into this episode. And uh, we did want to, you know, just encourage everybody to go check out 
the merchandise if you are a big fan of the show. It's also a great way to spread the word to everybody about your favorite podcast. Um, the the best disability friendly podcast this side of the Mississippi, as far as I know. <laughs> you know. Yeah, and th- okay. thank you, Cardinal Artwork, so much. For, yeah, definitely. Yeah, thank you for working with me on these designs. Mm-hmm. We we went through so many iterations. Um, and it was a collaborative process back and forth uh, before um, before we had the final design. Chris was was not quite sure how she was going to do like the the embroidery, and so that's something that we figured out. And we just originally they do a lot of sublimation, and so we decided for different color shirts. We're we're doing direct to film. I think it's called. Uh, it's allows you to print brighter colors than sublimation. Mm-hmm. So, but for our high for our high quality stuff, we're going to be doing, you know uh embroidery and we just want to let people know that patrons get f- i think five to ten percent off gold tier patron subscribers for all of our merchandise but yeah why don't you uh close us out d okay see you next time <laughs>